we want to pray with our series started last week arise and possess, possess your possession Amen. hallelujah Amen. don't just arise mm -hmm. and not do nothing hallelujah sure. don't just arise and smile at the devil hallelujah somehow Amen. but arise and get aggressive Amen. and possess your position Amen. when you cross the Jordan into Canaan yes. In other words, when you cross the river into your promise and into your inheritance, hallelujah. Yes. This is what I want you to do. Yeah. Drive out all the inhabitants of the land before you. Yes. Did you hear that? Drive out all the inhabitants. Amen. Those that are there, they are squatters, hallelujah. Yeah. Those that are living there now, they are squatters, hallelujah. Amen. Those that are holding on to your house, it's not theirs, but they are holding it for you. Are you with me? Yes. They are holding on to it until the time when you, your eyes open. Knowledge. Until the time you know that this house is mine after all. Yes. Huh? Yes. I'm so I want you to drive out all the inhabitants of the land before you. Number yes. one. Number two. Destroy all their curved images. Yeah. And their idols. Yes. Number three. Demolish all their high places. Amen. Hey. Amen. Then what comes after that? <laughs> Read with me. 53. Take possession. After that, what do you do? Possess. Possess. After that, what do you do? Possess. Take possession Amen. of the land and settle in it. Yes. For I have given you the land to possess. Amen. Where you are now is not where God wants you to be. Are you with me? Amen. Where you are now is not your final destination. Amen. Are you with me? Yes. You remember we preached about humble beginnings. I may be small today, but I'm growing up. Hallelujah, somebody. I may be an infant today, but I am growing up. Amen. I may be going through challenges now. Yes. But sooner or later, I will be victorious and I'm coming out. Hallelujah, sir. Hallelujah. There is something bigger for you out there. Yes. Only when you step out will you realize that there is something there. Hallelujah, sir. Hallelujah. But as long as you stay where you are, you don't want to realize what is out there. Amen. Are you with me? Yes. So coming to church, you've done yourself a favor because you've come to be told where your stuff is. Hallelujah, sir. Yes. And how you're going to get to your stuff. Are you with me? Yes. So know this. When you're coming to church, you are coming to get your navigator. Yes. So that you can find your way to where your position is. Yes. So when you come, listen and listen carefully. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. What you need to do? Elder Madan touched it. And I touched it last week. Amen. You need to destroy ignorance. Amen. Ignorance is your number one enemy. Amen. You are a 10 ton elephant. Yeah. Why would you be held down by a 10 kg chain? Hallelujah, sir. Okay. So you need to know who you are and you need to know who is out there. Hallelujah, sir. Okay. Because the Bible says, greater is it that is in you yes. than the one in the world. So in any situation, know that I am greater than my situation. Hallelujah, sir. Okay. It will not be in my eyes, but the reality is, it is small. Yes. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Number one, destroy ignorance. Amen. And number two, embrace knowledge. Amen. For knowledge is the key. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. If you know what you want, and if you know what is yours, you will go for it without hesitation. Amen. Number 33, 50 to 53. God says, number one, drive out the nations. Hallelujah, somebody. Yes. What was he saying? When you get into that land, it's not just lying on the ground. But someone is holding on to your stuff. Amen. The devil is holding on to your stuff. Yes. That witch is holding on to your stuff. Yes. That warlock is holding on to your stuff. Amen. Are you with me? Yeah. But then the Bible says, fight the good fight of faith. Amen. So possessing an inheritance, you are going to dispossess 
That person is holding your stuff. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. It's called disposition for possession. Yes. Are you with me? Yes. God says, drop them out. Why is he saying, God? Don't befriend those people. They are not your friends. Yes. Don't befriend the rich. It's not your friend. Yes. Don't befriend the laws of the devil. Yes. They are only lies. They are not there to make you rich. Are you with me? Amen. Don't befriend those people. Don't mix with them. You are not like them. Yes. And God moved on and he says, destroy their gift images and idols. What is he talking about? Destroy their family rituals. Destroy their traditions. Are you with me? Yeah. When you get there, your business is to get them out. Don't ask them any questions. Are you with me? Yeah. Just get there and dispossess them. So God is saying, if you want to hold on to your possession, or if you want to retain your possession, get rid of the old habits. Amen. Get rid of the family traditions. Yes. Those are the kept images. Yes. Get rid of those family rituals. Yes. Are you with me? Yes. If, if you don't do that, yeah. this is what's going to happen to you. Because God says, you did not destroy the family traditions. You did not destroy the rituals. Yes. So now, I'll send the Amalekites. Even though you possess that possession, when it's your time to enjoy your possession, the Americans are going to come and they're going to trouble on your possession. Are you with me? Glory to God. You are a child of God. Born again. Probably you came out of a, a wicked family. They do this black magic. They do this rituals. They consult the spirit mediums and all that stuff. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. But God is saying that is not your position. Amen. Are you with me? Yes. Step out of those traditions. Yeah. Walk out of those traditions. Yes. Then you shall possess the real inheritance. Yes. But if you know you have had the possession, hallelujah, somebody. Yes. If you go back to those old family traditions, this is what's going to happen to you. The Americans are going to come and ransack you. Possession. Yes. So when you possess it, hold on to it. Guard it jealously. Okay. Don't think it was your black magic that gave you those things. Okay. Don't think it was your juju that gave you that possession. Okay. Okay. But it was your Lord. Okay. Okay. Don't compromise. I'm born again. Let me say the vernacular. We don't have peace there. Amen. The dead are dead and they are forgotten. Amen. I'm not going to do that because I'm compromising my possession. Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. You go and you kneel down a tree and you clap your hands. Amen. I'm not going to do that because I'm compromising my possession. Amen. You tie those bangles and you tie that necklace. Amen. Amen. What is it? Those chunks. It's going to compromise your possession. So when you came to Christ, you had those things, but the Lord is saying, strip all the idolatry, strip all the juju your father gave you, strip all the juju your mother gave you, then you shall possess the possession. Are you with me? Don't remain in that ignorance. Your parents, they told you, or your grandfather told you, that this is what's going to give you a fortune. But that is not true. That is ignorance. That thing that you think you possess, it actually possesses you. Yes. That each time you say, oh, I've got a chikwambo, I've got a charm to give me money. Do you think you possess it? It actually possesses you. Amen. Because at the end of the day, what does it tell you? I want a wife. Huh? I want a child. Yeah. I want a husband. Yeah. Give me your son. I love your son. Hey. So do you really possess that chikwambo or it possesses you? It possesses you. So why are you having it then? You are becoming its prisoner. Amen. So the Lord is saying, if you want true possession, give it up. Yes. Give up the idol. Amen. Give up the high place. Tear them down. Amen. But you are in a prison because your parents did not drive out the inhabitants of the land. 
Your parents don't get into the bad traditions. Your children, your parents or your grand, your grandparents did not put on the altars to of the of the power of the supper. So this is why even though you have had your possession, you are still not enjoying it. Because there's still wickedness around you. Are you with me? There's still idolatry in your life. Are you with me? The Lord gave a command. Drive out the inhabitants. Destroy the idols in the altars. Hallelujah, somebody. But still in your life, still in your marriage, still in your in your heritage, hallelujah, somebody. There is still shrines. Hallelujah, somebody. Of the devil. So how can you enjoy the blessing of the Lord with the devil in your house? How can you? The Lord gave a command. After you have destroyed the people, after you have put down the idols, then you shall possess and you shall enjoy. Hallelujah, Sam. Gideon was saying, if there is a God, if God has given us this possession, why are we not enjoying the possession? We are in Canada, we are in the land, but why are we not possessing it? Well, we are possessed, but why are we not enjoying it? But then God says, when I give you an instruction, that I have no other gods. Put down the idols. You did not. Hallelujah, somebody. I say when you possess your inheritance, hold on to it. Amen. Get rid of the old habits. Yeah. Don't go back to your old life. Amen. Don't depend on those chaps. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. Get rid of them. Yes. Gideon says, how can I do this? Yeah. I'm only by a child. Hallelujah, somebody. Yeah. How can I do this? I'm only young in my family. How can I only do this? I'm the first one to graduate in my family. How can I do this? I'm the first one who's only made in my family. Hallelujah. Amen. But the Lord is saying, go in the strength you have. Yes. And enjoy your possession. Hallelujah. Hallelujah yes. The Lord says, I will be with you and you will strike down all the Midianites together. Hallelujah. Gideon replied, If I have found favor in you, hallelujah, somebody, then you wait here and I'll go and take my sacrifice. Gideon, in the first place, he was hiding in the white place, ignorant of what he is supposed to be possessing. Are you with me? But then when the angel of the Lord came to him, he told him, Gideon, you are a man of fire. Yes. Gideon, yes. you are not a poor person. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Gideon, your place is not in the white place. Hallelujah, yeah. But your place is out there. Hallelujah, yeah. But then the Bible says, when Gideon heard the word, his faith was stirred up. So what, what am I saying here? When Gideon was given the knowledge of what belongs to him, his faith was stirred up. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. Then he says, yes. If you are saying a man of fire, I will arise and I will possess what is mine. But then the first step Gideon says, because you have given me the knowledge, now I will make a sacrifice. Hallelujah. Amen. So his offering was thanksgiving. Thank you for opening up my eyes, O oh Lord. Thank you for telling me my inheritance. Thank you for telling me what is mine. Hallelujah, somebody. Then Gideon says, I will give, I will give my Lord an offering. The Bible says, faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Gideon had the word of God. And his faith was stirred up. Are you with me? Amen. So you need to know what is yours. Find out from the word. And when you hear the word, and when you know what the word says about that thing, your faith will be stirred up. And you're going to arise like Gideon. And it says, thank you Lord. I did not know that there is healing. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. 